Good morning, everyone. Thanks for um, signing in and joining us for today's webinar. My name is Dave Rosenlund, and I'll be the host today. Um, and uh, we have an exciting topic and an exciting presenter today. Um, Alex Christensen from App Dynamics will be talking about where's that ticket again, um, and he'll talk about the way he and the App Dynamics team manage Project Sprawl uh, in Jira. So I'll introduce Alex in just a second here, then we'll go through the presentation and Q&A. But just before we get to that, we do have a couple of housekeeping uh, items to go over with everybody. Um, as you may have already noticed, all attendee microphones are muted. This helps us uh, reduce the uh, extraneous noises like sirens when fire trucks pass by or barking dogs or crying babies in the background. I hope you'll all understand. Um, that's really the best way to do this. However, there is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you haven't found it yet, um, please identify that now. And I encourage you to, to pose questions as we go. We're gonna save all of the questions until the end when Alex is done presenting. And then um, I will read the questions to Alex or answer them myself as if it's about uh, structure or ALM works. Um, experience is any guide, if experience is any guide, we'll. Uh, most of the questions or nearly all of the questions will go to Alex. Um, and, um, and FYI, this is being recorded. So uh, we'll post this on our YouTube channel. If you attended today's uh, webinar, um, you'll get an email that s includes the link to that posting. Um, you can find it there uh, in about 24 hours after the webinar. Um, so if you want to share it with a friend or, or rewatch portions of it, um, you'll be able to do that. So let me introduce Alex, and I'm very excited to have him today. Uh, Alex has been working with Atlassian Tools since 2013. So he has a lot of experience, as I'm sure many of you do. Uh, he was born and raised in Texas, although he doesn't sound like it, in my opinion. Uh, he currently lives in Austin, uh, where he's one of the local ACE, or Atlassian Community Events Leaders. Um, he's actually spoken at Atlassian Summit on three occasions. Atlassian keeps inviting him back because, you'll, as you'll see in a moment, he's an excellent speaker. I've seen him personally present twice, and uh, that's why I'm so excited to have him here today. Um, but what he gets paid to do is to be the lead Atlassian suite engineer at AppDynamics. And AppDynamics is a Cisco company, if you didn't know that. So big organization, large instances of JIRA. Alex is part of a very important team there at uh, AppDynamics. Uh, he supports JIRA, Confluence, and Bitbucket for Atlassian's product development team, as well as the other teams that help AppDynamics deliver their products. And of course, he's a structure user and fan. Otherwise, we wouldn't have invited him no matter how good a presenter he is. With that said, Alex, over to you. That was a hell of an introduction. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much for having me today. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here. So yeah, um, let's get started. So um, yeah, gr growing up, most of the uh, organization in my life was completely up to me. You know, I'm an only child and I, I, I never really lived with anyone until my girlfriend and I moved in together when I was 26 years old. So, so basically it was entirely up to me how I structured my life and the stuff I had in it. Uh, you know, I decided it was probably a good idea, you know, that rubber bands and, and paper clips should go inside the same drawer as my silverware. You know, my, my linen closet was also the same storage space as my kitchen pantry. And my idea of a dresser was basically all my unfold, uh, unfolded clothes in my laundry basket. Uh, they, but don't worry, they, they were clean. Don't worry, they, they were clean at least. So for, for better or worse, this, this organization, it worked for me. I knew where everything was because you know I'm the only one who decided on the home for all of those things. And I was the only one who had to go and find all those things too. Now, however, I, I tended to lose things more often than I probably should have. And when I started sharing a living space with another human being, this organized chaos, you know, it didn't really scale very well, even if it was just a space for, for only two people. So organized chaos might work and might make sense for the one person who created that chaos but for anyone else, it's a never ending adventure of trying to find a damn fork. And I guess it's probably not really a nightmare. I mean, it's not, not more, it's not really an adventure. It's more of a nightmare, to be honest. Um, so I say all this to say organized chaos doesn't scale at all. It can't scale to an entire organization, let alone only two people. So this brings me to what I really want to talk to you about today, which is 
Project Sprawl and Jira. So Project Sprawl is something that plagues many Jira instances. In my opinion, this Project Sprawl is akin to organized chaos. Jira issues get lost. You might have too many projects to keep up with. Those projects overlap in their purpose, and people don't really know where to go to create new issues or find existing ones. Additionally, Project Sprawl results in a very poor ability to create any sort of meaningful uh, like reports to report on progress for an entire organization. And sure, there are products out there that help with this, such as Advanced Roadmaps for Jira, which used to be Portfolio, and obviously ALM works as very own structure. However, the level of effort you need to put into getting anything really like meaningful out of an organized chaos using these tools is probably much higher than if you had a better project organization and hierarchy in place in the first place. And your efforts are probably better spent actually cleaning up and creating a new project organization instead, or at least before you start using these tools. So our Jira instance at AppDynamics was, it was definitely subject to project sprawl and all the problems that come with it. Leadership would often ask questions about our progress, and it was difficult for project leads to give leadership this information easily and consistently. You know, engineers would <clears throat> work out of multiple projects, but it wasn't clear which projects they were working out of or which team they actually belonged to. Up to the point where my team was able to address this issue with project organization, AppDynamics had tried a, a few different ways of organizing projects, and none of them are you know, technically wrong, but none of them really fulfill their needs either. So this is definitely a trial and error process that might take several iterations to get right. And even though we've made a significant effort, effort to make our project structure the best that it can be, it's an ongoing and iterative process to make sure that we're continuing to do the right thing. So today I'm going to give you an overview of how we manage this project sprawl and our Jira instance at AppDynamics. So first, it's just to give some context to this whole situation. Um, I'll give you a brief history of how we've used the Atlassian suite at AppDynamics. And then next I'll drill down into some of the approaches AppDynamics had, had tried before for a Jira project structure, highlighting the pros and cons of each approach. And then I'll cover how we went about defining a new project structure that was actually scalable. And then I'll talk about how we actually implemented that new project structure for our product organization within our company. And lastly, I'll review the benefits we've seen so far after implementing this new project structure, which includes, I'll, I'll show off some of the reports that we've been able to create actually using ALM Works's structure app for Jira. And before I do uh, go too much further, I have a couple housekeeping points on, on my part. Um, I wanna point out that I'm going to be using the word structure a lot, uh, but kind of in two different contexts. Um, um, I think most often I'll be referring to it and how our Jira projects are actually organized and structured in our Jira instance, um, but as well as in reference to our webinar, uh, webinar host marketplace app structure for Jira. So um, when I do um, refer to the app, I'll, I'll do my best to refer to it as structure for Jira, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, also, you may see some uh, in, in the footer of some of the slides on here, you might see uh, you might see it say confidential and proprietary. This is a template that I'm using from um, my company. Um, and I couldn't remove it, but don't worry, none of this is actually confidential. So please most definitely share this with your colleagues and your friends, uh, share it with whoever you want. So to start us off here and to give us the best context here, let's take a look at the history of how we've used the Atlassian suite at AppDynamics. Hopefully this should give you some idea as to why we ended up facing project sprawl and an organized chaos and a glimpse of into the steps we've taken to resolve some of those issues, even if they're not directly related to a JIRA project structure. So the product teams within AppDynamics have actually been using JIRA and Confluence Cloud since 2008, which was known as on-demand back then. At that point, the company was still in its early days and in startup mode, so JIRA and Confluence Cloud could scale easily with their needs. Like many organizations at the time though, AppDynamics did not have a dedicated Atlassian subject matter expert to help guide the architecture of how to configure the Atlassian suite using best practices. And for the most part, every user was a global admin and for a company that was getting ready to grow its employee base exponentially, the configurations of our Atlassian suite and the, you know, the wild west approach to Atlassian administration just wasn't very scalable. So with, the, so with the idea that we needed to scale our Atlassian suite in mind, in, the late, in late 2016, we decided to move from Garrett to Bitbucket Data Center for our code source control repository management. 
On the coattails of this decision in early 2017 was also the decision to migrate our JIRA and Confluence instance, uh, instances to data center from cloud, which we decided uh, for uh, a few reasons. So at the time, uh, this is no longer the case, but the user cap on Atlassian's cloud offerings was 2000 users. Our organization was basically at this cap due to an uptick in employee onboarding. So we needed an instance where we could grow beyond this user cap. Also, being a larger organization in a highly regulated industry, we needed to be able to have control as to when new features are introduced to our end users. There's little to no control over feature releases in any cloud product, and this isn't just you know, Jira or Elastic and stuff. So we really needed this control to help our end users have more consistency in the tool set they use day to day. Additionally, the Atlassian Marketplace had some options for server and data center instances that would fill specific requirements our user base wanted out of our Atlassian tool set. And we really wanted to be able to take advantage of those options in the marketplace. We completed our migration from Jira Cloud to data center in August of 2017. I'm, I'm not gonna dive into it too much today, but we also began using Jira Service Desk internally for many of our support teams like IT, facilities, and more. If you do want to go hear more about our uh, the App Dynamics journey with Jira Service Desk, uh, my manager Jeff Till and I actually did a session on this at some Summit 2018, and you can find that recording on uh, the Atlassian Summit 2018 playlist on Atlassian's YouTube channel. As our organization was attempting to move into an agile model, we constantly found barriers in our Atlassian Suite's implementation, which prevented us from really being able to move into that agile model. Conversations often went, well, we could do that, but not with how JIRA is set up today. This quickly got dubbed as bad JIRA hygiene because we needed an easy way to refer to this situation. So between the time of our JIRA data center migration and now, we've actually taken quite a few actions to clean this up. And as you might guess from the title of this presentation, a big part of this cleanup was our reorganization of JIRA projects to prevent and manage project sprawl. So the latest significant project we completed was our migration of Confluence Cloud to Data Center as well, which we completed in June of last year. We would have completed this project sooner, but there was more of a need to focus on JIRA's hygiene problems than the migration of our Confluence instance to Data Center. In terms of cleaning up our Atlassian suite, it's actually been immensely beneficial having all of our suite in, uh, in the Data Center offerings. You know, Because Atlassian splits the code base between Cloud and Server and Data Center offerings, a few years ago, <clears throat> excuse me. It's been difficult to have an Atlassian suite, which is a mix of cloud and on-premise uh, offerings or self-managed offerings. Um, so just by having all of our instances and data center has provided a much more streamlined and uniform experience for our end users. And I would say the same goes for having everything in cloud. So if you're gonna pick one, or if you're gonna have a Atlassian suite, pick an offering. We took on many of these cleanup projects because we knew these projects would you know, set us up for success when reorganizing our JIRA project structure. You know, for the duration of most of these projects you see here, our product organization was also going through a couple of reorgani reorganizations themselves as well. And we thought the end result of these, you know, these reorgs would actually help dictate a new project hierarchy and structure in JIRA as well. In addition to the historical context of our use of the Atlassian suite, I also wanted to cover what AppDynamics has tried in terms of project structure in JIRA. This historical context helped our own team learn what and what not to do here to ensure our success for the future. So more or less, we took two different approaches. The first approach was all of engineering worked out of a single JIRA project. And then our second attempt was this single project was then split up into 40 plus projects based on their area of product focus. So let's, let's review the pros and cons of each. Uh, the first attempt, as I just mentioned, for our project structure for our product organization was to work out of one single JIRA project. This was definitely the best approach to start with. At the time, AppDynamics was a smaller organization than it is today, and working out of a single project was the perfect fit. However, as we grew, more teams got involved, and working out of a single project didn't prove to really be scalable. In this case, using a single project does have some benefits. In one project, you, everything is just in one place. It's more difficult to lose things, and it's much easier to tell someone where to go to create a new ticket. Additionally, all engineers and managers are tracking work in the exact same way because the project has a single set of workflows, issue types, and other configuration settings. Additionally, version and component management is way easier. Um, it's more consistent to manage as well, since there's only one project's worth of versions and components to manage. 
However, there are some downsides to this approach as well. You know, not every team works exactly the same and they might need different workflows. In a single project, it's not possible to have different workflows for a single issue type. You know, allowing teams to have different workflows was impossible in this setup unless we wanted to introduce a configuration nightmare into this single project. You know, due to the number of people working out of the single project as well, there were also a ton of administrators just naturally on this single project. This led to a lot of duplication and efforts for uh, version and component management, as well as overlapping and unclear responsibilities for project administrative work. And then teams also kept walking over each other in the single project. You know, some fields were intended or applicable only for certain teams. You know, some teams used other teams as components incorrectly, and stories were often assigned to the incorrect people who actually weren't on the team that they were um, intended to be on. So while using a single project can be, be it, it's an applicable and worthy solution for smaller teams, this option really wasn't scalable for our needs. Our company's size and product was growing quickly, and it was clear that the cons of using a single project we're definitely outweighing the benefits. So with that in mind, the decision was made to split up the single project into 40 plus projects, with each project representing some portion of our product. So when this was implemented, the teams were expecting the following benefits. Each team would have its own workspace to control who would work on which project. In theory, each project could have its own set of workflows and other configurations. So I'll, I'll come back to this one actually when addressing the downsides uh, as well. Um, and also in theory, users would also know where to go to look for work in progress or know where to go to file a new ticket. So as you may have picked up when I was listing those things out, these benefits were more or less theoretical. While the teams expected these benefits, they weren't necessarily the reality. In reality, each project actually continued to share the same scheme, uh, scheme configurations, specifically around workflows. <clears throat> this was for uh, consistency across each project but really just kind of created the same result as if teams were working out of a single project still. There was no real flexibility to allow teams to work in the way that they wanted to work. The purpose of each project was also not clearly defined when splitting up into these multiple projects. There was still a lack of clarity into what each project represented and that definition and clarity often just lived in the minds of the project leads without being properly documented anywhere. And lastly, version management became a nightmare. You know, for the most part, the intent was to maintain the same versions across projects. However, this requires versions to be created manually in every project, which is definitely subject to user error, whether that be variations on spelling, uh, versions not getting created at all because someone just forgot, um, or, you know, different methodologies of versioning across teams altogether. This also caused issues with our entire build and release model, since there were so many inconsistencies in versioning between projects and teams. So while the intent and purpose of splitting up into multiple projects was valid, the execution of this honestly created a bigger mess than we had before in the single project. However, we obviously couldn't go back to the single project model we already outgrew since we know that that, that model didn't work. So for a while there, we were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. How do we go about defining a new project structure if these two extremes of one versus many didn't really work out in either case? There didn't seem to be a clear-cut, simple solution we could implement. So during this limbo period, uh, my team of Atlassian admins, you know, we tried to imagine a perfect world for what a JIRA project structure would look like. During our brainstorming sessions, we thought of a few ways we might be able to structure projects by determining what a project is actually supposed to represent. So in our case, we came up with two, like, we came up with two things. A project can represent a single team responsible for certain work. So think of this more along the lines of like a, like a workspace rather than the, not the traditional like non-JIRA definition of the word project. And then also a project can represent a releasable product, SKU, or component of a product. This is not an ideal approach to take advantage of versioning per project, in my opinion. So these are the two main approaches that made the most sense for AppDynamics. You know, there are definitely additional viable options for what a project can represent. The important thing here when defining this for your own organization is to make sure you, you, you create these clear definitions as a starting point to kind of use as a rule of thumb when creating a project structure in JIRA. So while we were going through this brainstorming, our product organization was also trying to go through this agile transformation. 
And alongside with that agile transformation came some restructuring of the product organization itself. There's a rabbit hole of discussion points here regarding Atlassian hygiene here. So to avoid going down that rabbit hole and making a long story shorter, our product organization adopted a new organizational model, which we call crews and squads instead. And you can see here that uh, we have our overall product org made up, made up of different crews, and then we have squads rolling up into those crews. So this new model gave us something hierarchical to work with and recreate in our own Jira project structure as well. The new model gave us a perfect idea of what leadership needed in terms of reporting. And we met with leadership to help us understand the specifics around the reports they were looking for. And basically, they wanted to pull reports as follows. They wanted to be able to report on progress for the entire product organization. They wanted to be able to report on progress for a specific crew or multiple crews, but not necessarily the entire organization. And they wanted to be able to report on progress for a specific squad or set of squads, but not an entire crew. We needed to be able to create reports our leadership could look at without having to drill down too far into JIRA and maybe not even know how to really use JIRA that much at all. So with these requirements in mind, we were able to deliver two options for every crew in our product organization when it comes to JIRA project hierarchy. The first one is a single project will represent an entire crew and all squads within that crew will work out of the single project. Or a project will represent a single squad, which will then be put into a project category with the name of the parent crew. In either of these options, we created a project category for crew, for each crew to represent that crew as well. So for reporting purposes, we'd actually be able to fulfill all three of these requirements we were given with some pretty simple JQL queries. So for reporting on the entire org, we'd include uh, JQL like you see here. So we had something like category is not empty to get all the projects that aren't part of a category. And then a category not in, you know, we also have some projects in JIRA that aren't affiliated with our product organization. So we would include category not in product, uh, non-product crew A. So for reporting at the single crew level, we'd be able to use something really simple like category in crew A. And if you want to do multiple, you could do crew A, crew B, whatever the names of those crews are. And then for reporting at the single squad level, we can use JQL like uh, if, if they're using the model where a project represents a squad, you can just do project equals squad A. If a project represents a crew, um, we provided a custom field to those crews to help them identify their squads in a single project, or they opt, maybe they opted to use components or something like that. So you can use JQL very similar to something like category in crew A and squad equals squad A, or if, you, if they were using components instead of a squad custom field, they could do component in or component equals squad A as well. So our main goal for this restructure was to enforce some consistency for rolling up reporting on progress, but also allow the flexibility to product teams to work the way that makes most sense for their teams. As part of this refactoring uh, of, our, of our projects, we also took the opportunity to enable each of these projects to have their own unique workflows and prevent all projects from sharing this all the same workflow. So to maintain the consistency we wanted here, we took advantage of status categories. In JIRA, we have three status categories. We have to do, in progress, and done. So we made sure all the statuses that existed in our JIRA instance were in the correct status category. We went through tons of hours of discussions behind this. And we can now easily create reports based on these status categories. In, in JQL, there's actually, you can do status category equals to do or status category equals in progress. And you know, through our discovery interviews, when trying to determine what uh, the project structure that we wanted, we determined that these are the three statuses, like these three categories. This is all that leadership really cared about. You know, our leadership didn't care about the nuances of each category, really. They didn't care if a specific story was actively being coded or if it was in testing or in review. All they know is that we're actively working on the ticket, a ticket is ready to work, or if the work has been completed. The other main goal we had for this project restructure was to have more meaningful reporting we could provide to leadership. Our problems up to this point was, you know, they were due to a lack of consistency whether that be talking about consistent workflows, consistent meanings of what a project represents, a lack or inconsistent definition for internal SLAs and more. You know, refactoring the projects in the way that we did allowed us uh, to create some really great meaningful reports, many of which are powered by ALMWorks' structure for JIRA. 
Now, before I go into these reports, I do want to describe how we implemented our hierarchy of work items, since this is actually kind of also how we roll up all of our work for reporting in addition to this project restructure. So they kind of work together in tandem. Um, so by default, Jira software gives you uh, the simple hierarchy of epics to stories to subtasks. Now, this is great, but we needed a level in our hierarchy that, you know, encapsulates many epics. I think, I think I've heard it referred to sometimes as like a super epic. Uh, so before we actually started using structure for Jira, uh, we actually also used advanced roadmaps for Jira, or formerly known as portfolio. So using the configurations of advanced roadmaps, which we still have installed today, though we're not using it as much since we've started using structure for Jira for most of our reporting, we have a custom hierarchy in place which uses the issue type called product initiative as the level above epics. So our hierarchy goes from at the top level, product initiative, down to epics that roll up into those initiatives, which stories then roll up into epics and then subtasks rolling up into stories. So these product initiatives actually live in a single project that is not specifically tied to a crew or squads project. Uh, the product initiative itself is not a work item, but it's more of a bucket that allows us to roll up a crew, a crew's or squads epics, stories, and subtasks into a single place. So this is a great model for us because a single crew may or, uh, or a single crew or squad may or may not own an entire product initiative. And it's a great way for us to add epics and stories from many different areas. So many different crews or many different squads um, or many different projects and just roll them up into a single place. It's also assisted us with a unified vision of our product roadmap and it helps us with a unified release management strategy too. So with that in mind, the first thing I'd like to show you is a screenshot of our unified roadmap. Uh, the automation for this structure and structure for JIRA is actually based on, <coughs> uh, based on queries uh, on each crew or project category in JIRA, as I outlined earlier. We also have the roadmap displayed in two different formats, one by crew, and then the other by the roadmap month we plan to ship or complete each initiative. You know, anyone in JIRA can come to this page to see what every crew is working on. When we're planning on completing our initiatives, you know, how confident we are in, in our commitment to a given roadmap month release, and if we've committed to any customers for a given initiative as well. So while some of this would have been possible without our new JIRA project structure, our new, our new project hierarchy and structure enhanced our ability to track this work and enabled our crew and squad leadership to easily report on their progress for everything that they're working on. Another structure that we use often is our solutions-based roadmap. So this, this structure actually shows similar information as our unified roadmap, but it breaks down our roadmap by the solutions we're delivering that require cross-functional contributions from many crews through many different initiatives. You know, the biggest difference on this from the unified roadmap is that this structure contains a roll-up of work items all the way down to subtasks. So anyone in JIRA can come to this structure for this, this structure and, and view and drill down into the specifics if they, you know, if they want to see progress on a very specific work item. You know, one of the other, the first big reporting initiatives our team worked on after our refactoring of our JIRA project structure was to help us report on our bug, uh, on our bugs with you know, two goals in mind. Figuring out how we've done historically and report on trends in our internal SLAs for bug fixes, and then how, how, how we can be more aware of high priority bugs to improve our success rate on those SLAs. So for the first goal, we created a new EZBI report that highlights our success rate on our bug resolution SLAs. So because of our work on refactoring our JIRA project structure, we can easily filter the same chart by crew, we can filter by multiple crews, multiple squads, or specific squads to see where we need the most work in meeting our SLAs. From the time we started actually using this chart, you can actually see you know, the trend in our success rate go up, which has been a really great result of all of our work here. So to help monitor our current open bugs, we actually have another structure created for this as well. On this structure view, um, all of our bugs are broken down by priority as well as by each squad. So you can view it either way. You know, this has helped us stay on top or stay, stay top of mind with active high priority bugs, as well as helped us with accountability with bugs per squad as well. You know, again, this structure and reporting, you know, this, this wouldn't be possible without the work we put into refactoring our project structure. Despite all the hard work we put into this refactoring of project structure in our JIRA instance and the benefits we've already seen as a result of our work, <clears throat> we're not done yet. We still have some things we want to do to make our JIRA experience better. 
you know, we'd like to match the same mapping for crews and squads for JIRA projects to the other tools in our build and release tool set to help maintain consistency across the entire tool set, like matching Bitbucket project, projects to crews or squads, Confluence spaces to the same crews and squads model, as well as other tools like Team City that we use internally. We're also planning on exploring the best ways to apply or create custom project properties <clears throat> to allow us to create even more reporting options such as reporting on progress by the, the VP who owns a specific crew or a squad, or like if they roll up to a specific person. It's also a great way for us to ensure JIRA is always the source of truth for this information on who is leading a crew, you know, who might be the technical program manager for a squad, and lots more. So to wrap us up here, I'd like to highlight two main takeaways I hope you got out of this presentation. Now first, Take the time to define what you and your organization deems as an acceptable project structure. You can use the exact guidelines I outlined today for what a project can represent, but in my opinion, this is really going to be different for every organization. As long as you define and at least mostly agree on what a project should represent, I think that's what's most important. And then as a guiding principle, try to be flexible with options while maintaining the, system, the consistency you need for reporting. You know, it's, it's going to be a constant push and pull when, you know, trying to be flexible and consistent. Uh, you know, when starting these discussions, make sure you just ask your stakeholders what they would like to see as consistencies and then see what options are available for flexibility within those enforced restrictions and consistencies. So with that, uh, I think we'll go ahead and open it up to Q&A. That's, that's what I have for the plan part of the presentation. Awesome, thank you, Alex. Great, great job with the content. And we do have a number of questions lined up. So let me great. just uh, start right away. Um, and um, to everyone in the audience, go ahead and post your questions in the Q&A uh, feature, as I mentioned before. And if we don't get to your question, um, we'll follow up with you after the webinar. If we run out of time and don't get to all the questions, we will follow up with you afterwards. So the first question is from Amy. Uh, can a JIRA project represent an actual project with defined start and end dates? Yeah, I would say I would de definitely, um, especially I, I know um, in both cloud and data center offerings, um, Atlassian is implementing some new features that can definitely make that a viable option. Um, you know, I, in cloud, I'm, I'm not as much of a cloud user as I am with, with data center, but with cloud, you know, they have the new, the next gen projects, which can be spun up um, by anyone. And it's really easy to close out those projects or archive them too. And in, in, in data center, um, there's now the ability to archive issues and archive projects as well. So if you want to spin up a, a project in, in a data center offering and um, say, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> this is the start of this and this is the end of it, I can easily archive it and, and put it away if I don't need it anymore, for sure. Cool. Um, also from Amy, did you consider any other tools in your Atlassian suite um, when you were refactoring your, refactoring your project structure? <clears throat> Um, yeah, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier. So um, our, our initial approach on this was actually a huge, uh, huge in scope. So like we wanted to re refactor um, how JIRA projects were structured, how Bitbucket projects were structured in addition to the projects, the repos, uh, same with Confluence and um, uh, like things like Team City. We like, I, so I work on our build and release engineering team <clears throat> at uh, AppDynamics and we, our team owns a plethora of products that help us build and release our product. And we wanted to make sure there was consistency across all of them. And we had defined this and, and put this in, in front of our, our leadership team, but um, we were having trouble with buy-in because the scope was just too big. Even if like it was like totally valid points and ideas, just the scope was too big and we never got it started. It just felt like it was gonna end up being like this huge waterfall project that was just gonna kind of fail and let us fall flat on our face. So we decided to adjust and take a more iterative agile approach and started with JIRA project structure because that's where we're tracking our work. So we thought it made the most sense to start there. But we do have plans to, to move forward and, and do the rest of our build and release tool set. It might take some time for us to get to all those things, but um, that is our plan. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Ne next question. Sylvia is asking, did you use any sort of drawing tool to visualize or communicate your proposed project structures to other stakeholders? <clears throat> um, let me think. So, uh, I mean, we're very heavy Atlassian users. So um, in our Confluence instance, we, um, we have Gliffy installed. Um, we use a lot of Gliffy charts to, to, to show that off. Um, 
uh, we also, our, our company, I think, uses Lucidchart as well. So the, the, for those of, that people use Lucidchart, but in our case, we used a lot of uh, glyphy diagrams. Um, we also did a lot of proof of concepts in a, in a development environment uh, where we actually mocked up this project structure and then used ALM Works' app structure for JIRA to show like we could get this report out of this project structure if you let us do this thing. So it was a really good tangible way for us to show actually the tool in progress. And we actually were able to, because structure is so flexible, we were able to show using production data in our current, like with live data and, and have an update before we did our project refactoring. It just had a lot more, com like a lot more complex uh, queries and there were some caveats that information wasn't necessarily 100% correct or mapping to a specific crew or a squad at that point. But um, yeah, we, we definitely, we used for diagramming, we used, uh, I think, Cliffy, and then um, we actually used the product structure for JIRA itself to imagine a world, uh, uh, the perfect world that we wanted to go to as well. Um, okay, and then we have um, from Angelo. Uh, first of all, he has a comment, um, great presentation, and then a Thanks. question. And James has a related question, so I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to combine them if that's okay. okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, how do you define a primary crew is what Angelo was asking. And then James was asking, how do you track resource availability across squads and crews in JIRA? Or do you? So um, that's, that's one of the next steps that we're going to be trying. So we do, have, we do uh, track resources, um, but we have to, we, like, with the way that we have it uh, set up right now, um, there's not really any way for like to see like look, look, look at a specific user in JIRA itself and, and, and in the tool to see like this person rolls up to this manager or rolls up to this squad or this crew. Um, that's actually all managed separately right now, whether that's through our HR system. Uh, we have a separate um, source of truth as well that lists out like here are all the, the crews and these are the squads that make up those crews, who is the lead on each of them, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so today it's not it's not super clean and easy to do, but it's something we're working towards. Um, I think I mentioned the um, uh, project properties definition uh, that we that we were going to uh, take on. Uh, there's actually there's a free marketplace app out there. I, I I think it's called Custom Project Properties. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's free, and it allows us to define uh, you know key value pairs at a project level. Um, so we're using that to to, to use Jira. We're, we're, our intent is to use Jira as the source of truth to see who like. Um, who is the squad lead, who is the technical program manager, who's the product manager, who, um, you know, various things like that. And then we're also evaluating, um, uh, I think of an app called user profiles for JIRA. And I think there's one for Confluence and I'm not sure about Bitbucket, but I know there's one for JIRA and Confluence, um, but that allows us to um, allow us to store custom user uh, uh, profile properties uh, per user as well. So like I can, um, on my on my own profile, I can define who's my manager and who is um, that, uh, what squad do I belong to, what crew do I belong to, and our our intent there right now is to have that be um, uh, provided by each user individually. Like it's the onus is on them, so it takes off because um, right now, like as a growing organization, as you saw earlier, we um, we have a lot of refactoring to do in terms of how our um, you know, user provisioning goes across, not just for our lasting suite, but across all of our, um, all of our tools that we use to help build our product. And um, we're going through a refactoring of uh, access management right now. And, you know, until we can complete that, and, and that's a pretty big process, you know, we have a company of two or 3000 people. So we really need to make sure that it's done correctly. But in the meantime, the, the data will be sourced from the individual and they can put that information on their profile in JIRA. And then the user profiles uh, for JIRA app is actually really flexible in terms of like um, showing, it's showing contextual information like when viewing an issue. So if I want to go view an issue um, or search for issues uh, that have an assignee that are roll up to a specific manager, we can do it that way too. And it's easy to export that uh, or report on that in the tool itself using something like EasyBI or even Structure to, to show like how we roll up those reports to squads, crews, and then uh, even more with resource management. Re resource management is not, not my forte. Um, we, have a, we have a person at our company that is dedicated to, to doing all of that tracking for us. And she's done a really great job and uh, we work in tandem with each other to, to see how we can make the tool work better every day. Cool. So I, I hope that answers the question. <clears throat> I think it does, but um, if we didn't answer your question, um, James and um, um, who was the other person? Um, Angelo, just let us know. Um, so Virginia is asking, um, was there any resistance 
from your stakeholders to use uh, JIRA, I'm sorry, to use structure um, as your um, as a primary way of rolling things up or, or reporting things. Um, our management insists on everything being in Excel. Um, and if you have any tips on how we can get past that, that would be great. Yeah, um, that's not an easy thing to get over for sure, especially the people who are very used to using Excel and, and are comfortable with it. I think that's going to go for any tool. I don't, I don't think that's going to be unique to, to something like structure. I think that's just uh, plain old convincing someone to get out of a spreadsheet into a tool like Jira. Um, you know, fortunately, we are, you know, all of our teams have been working out of Jira for, you know, over 10 years at this point. So it was, it was a lot easier for us to sell structure, especially it was actually, it was easier for us to, um, you know, sell our users on using structure for Jira than portfolio, for example, like portfolio, I think is a really great product. I'm sorry, it's advanced roadmaps for Jira now. Um, it's a really great product. Um, but it also, in my opinion, you have to be every team rolling up into a portfolio plan has to be using Jira in the exact same way, or the data isn't really all that meaningful, in my opinion. Um, structure has been was a lot more flexible, and we were also really we were able to show users on the fly, like just spin up a demo, like spin up with a half hour with them, and show them on the fly, like hey, I built this, built this using automation. I can drag and drop things in too, and. Um, uh, and a shout out to the ALM Works team. We've even had we even had them come in and give give demos and do Q and A sessions with with our product managers to show them how easy it was. And I mean, they were sold right away. Excellent, um, in Virginia. I, I would add too. I think what you're what you're asking about is sort of a common problem. Uh, leadership expects to see things, or management in particular expects to see things a certain way. And agile teams are used to using things like Jira and structure. Um, so it is a common issue. Um, I don't know if you're using the, the structure gadget in your Confluence pages or your JIRA dashboards, but you might want to take a look at using, if you're not already doing so, take a look at using the um, structure gadget and just keep hammering home that point that, that when people look at reports through structure, they're looking at live data JIRA. I mean, live JIRA data. Yeah. Um, so it's not like when you export something to Excel, you create a beautiful report and it's obsolete two days later because everything's changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep hammering that home, Virginia. All right, next question um, from Peter. How did your solution solve the problem of sprawl concerning versions? And after all, you still have many projects in your instance, question mark. So yeah, for projects. sure, it, it, that's, that's a very valid question. It didn't, we haven't solved that problem fully yet. Um, we have more uh, people dedicated to release management and bringing some uh, consistency to that. Um, but we have not found the best solution for that yet. We are working on it. There are some um, apps out there on the marketplace that help with that. I believe there's one called like version, uh, version sync. I'm, I forget who the, the vendor is and the actual name of the, the add-on. And I think it's like version and component sync. We, we, we did that once, but um, uh, our hygiene at this point, um, you know, with our wild west approach where we had so many admins like just creating components and versions willy nilly. Um, it felt it was almost a little too destructive to have us start using it right away. Um, so our main focus was getting teams to, you know, you know, have the workflow and, and workspace to do what they need to do. And then, you know, we're going to, we're, we're starting to take steps to uh, clean up those versions are really, we have a dedicated release management team um, to help maintain consistency across all of our projects for things like that. Um, we've all, and they're also kind of um, trying to bring a consistent and unified uh, versioning model and, and methodology to our to our teams as well. Um, whether that be you know, you know, uh, a specific version number of like x dot x dot x, so like something like five dot o dot one, or you know, monthly versioning that kind of thing. So we're we're trying to bring consistency with that. Um, a project that I worked on recently um, was kind of a. Um, that I did personally, I, I wrote some uh, pipelines that can be executed in, in, in Team City to actually you know, execute a script to um, you know, create, a, create a version in multiple projects, update a version name in multiple projects, uh, delete that version if, if needed, as well as uh, release a version. So um, it's not the full-fledged um, add-on or built actually into JIRA itself. Um, that I mentioned earlier, but uh, it's a way that I've, it's, it's something I've, I've been able to provide to release management to help uh, start up cleaning, of that, uh, cleaning up that bad hygiene, for sure. 
Um, and it looks like I did um, Angelo a disservice earlier when I combined two questions. So he's, he's asking um, a similar question to the one he asked earlier. I'm guessing we didn't really answer his question mm -hmm. the way he was hoping. Sure. So specifically, how do, you how do you define and maintain a primary crew? Is it the level, um, is it the team level, are, are, are issues assigned at the team level or I guess at the uh, assignee level? Um, so um, first of all, a crew in our case represents an area of our product. Um, and then we have the squads that make up those crews. So we tend to, like, like, like I mentioned the two project structures that we say, we have uh, the option of having a single project where they can define the, the crew um, at using like a custom field or if they want to use component, that's fine too. Um, so we, we kind of assign it to crews and squads in that way. Um, if it's going to a particular squad and they have their own project, we can put it in their project. So that's kind of the way that we assign uh, different issues or epics or stories to specific crews or squads. And then, you know, obviously there's the assignee field that's in JIRA and then someone on that team will be assigned to it. Um, we kind of have that, we wanted to have some flexibility in the way that we report on that or uh, the way that teams can work on, on things too, because some people work in Scrum, some people work in Kanban. So we, we and, and, you know, they work in, they have different methodologies of what it means and what it, what it means to be uh, the actual assignee or the assigned user. So um, we don't necessarily report um, ownership, like crew or squad ownership based on the assignee. Uh, we do use that in terms of resource management though. So like we can say like, hey, this person has this much bandwidth and they're assigned to this, these, these many things or they're working on these many things in uh, active and open work. Um, I, I, again, I hope that answers the question. I, um, yeah. Hopefully Angela will come back if we do. Yeah. Um, um, New topic here. Um, it's a little bit related to one of the questions you answered a moment ago, but different, I think. Um, Brad is asking, so now that you have this great project hygiene, how do you deflect uh, requests from your users for new sprawl, uh, i.e. JIRA customization requests? Um, any, any suggestions or best practices there? Yeah, so a, a couple things. Um, so our, our source of truth right now for like what it means so to be a crew or a squad is actually just in a, a Google spreadsheet right now. We're making, we're, that was because that's where we you know, did the ideation and brainstorming for that breakdown. Um, so basically that source of truth, if, if a crew or a squad doesn't exist in that source of truth, they don't get a JIRA project, that kind of thing. We, we point them to um, our product organization leadership and the team in charge of defining crews and squads. And we point them to that. We point any users requesting a new project, uh, if they're part of the product organization, um, to that team. You know, we, we also have people who aren't, or are teams that aren't in the product organization working out of JIRA. So like we have uh, marketing, um, uh, HR, and like they, they don't directly create like the releasable product. They support the, you know, they do marketing efforts and it's not tracked and versioned in the same way that um, we would for our releasable app dynamics product. Um, so that's been kind of one way that we um, deflect or make sure that we're doing the right thing and making sure that project fraud doesn't get out of hand. Um, uh, our own team, we, we so the build and release team, uh, Bear for short, um, we uh, we we uh, we use Jira as kind of we try to lead by example using Jira, and we uh, request that anyone who wants a new project put in a Jira project request with us. We actually have an issue type for a Jira project request. Uh, to say, like, to ask them if, uh, for information about, like, okay, why do you need this? What's the context here? Um, that kind of thing. We also have a, a few confluence pages uh, outlined to be like, hey, you're wanting a new Jira project. Um, you know, here's some information on, you know, why or why not you might actually need one. So that's been that's been a great way for us to ensure um, that we're going forward and maintaining that good hygiene. We also have um, notifications that ping our Slack channel. Um, we, use, we use script runner as well. So we have a script listener that uh, pings a Slack channel on the, anytime the event of a project is being created, it fires off and gives the name of the project and who created it. So we can all hold each other accountable to be like, Hey, I saw you created a project. What's that for? And we can just make sure we're asking the right questions. We do the same thing actually with uh, user groups too, to make, we, we, did, we did a big effort to clean up um, all of our, we had like 200 user groups and now we have like 30 or 40 and they all have a, like a defined purpose. And, so we have the same thing go off and we make sure we just talk about it every time to make sure that it's valid. Great. Uh, next question. Peter is asking, do you use structure only in-house or do you have any external 
customers, either in the Cisco part of the organization or maybe some other external customer. And then he's got so, a second part to the question too. I'll, I'll let you answer the first part. Okay, cool. Yeah, the audience of our internal Atlassian suite is completely internal to AppDynamics. Um, and because, you know, AppDynamics was acquired by Cisco in um, 2017, early 2017. And, uh, you know, um, we still have our own unique system. So like uh, we haven't, if, if we want to have a, a, someone from Cisco um, have access to our Jira instance, we have to we have to onboard them as like an app app dynamics employee or an app dynamics contractor. So we do that uh, at, an, at an ad hoc request. But our our Atlassian suite is completely internal, and we do not share it externally. No. Okay. And that makes the second part of his question uh, irrelevant. But Peter, I I know of customers that use um, structure with external uh, their external customers. So if you want to follow up with me. You can just use the webinars at ALMWorks address. Um, you can follow up with me if you want me to, uh, to give you some feedback on that question, further feedback on that question. Um, um, Sue is asking, you, you, talk, you touched on Confluence a little bit, could you, but could you elaborate on, on how you guys are, are using Confluence plus Jira at all? Yeah, we're, we're I mean, it's a, we try to get people out of, um, uh, Google Drive and put them into Confluence as much as we can, just because it integrates so well with Jira. Um, we use we use Confluence for so many different things. Um, all of our product teams use it for our internal documentation, meeting notes, just collaboration on uh, ideas and brainstorming. Um, our own team uses it for just showing what our service catalog is, and as well as documenting our our, our service catalog roadmaps. Um, a lot of the teams use it for like more. So every every user in our or every person in our company has access to Confluence while they may not necessarily have a Jira license. So if we want to show them uh, reports and things like that when they don't have a Jira uh, license, we can easily point them to Confluence or different Confluence pages too. So, I mean, uh, yeah, our, our Confluence is, you, our, our internal Confluence is used for so many different things. Um, we also have a public facing documentation. So for our, like our, our, our products documentation, uh, that also is hosted on a Confluence data center instance. It's a separate instance from our internal one because it's external facing and uh, allows anonymous access. But we do, it's like docs.appdynamics.com. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm gonna give you one more question from the audience and then um, there, there are about three or four questions that we're not gonna be able to get to today because of time. But I okay. promise everyone who's asked those questions, thankfully nobody asked an anonymous question here, which is possible in the, the Zoom platform. And then we can't get back to them if they do that. But in this case, the people, the, the remaining questions are all from people who are not anonymous. So I promise you that we'll get back to you, including you, Angelo. He still has more questions about the, the use of Q, uh, crews and squads, but we'll follow up with him after the fact. And we'll leave the last question um, to, uh, to Willie. Did you consider using any other tools to manage this project before choosing structure and easy BI? Um, we evaluated a couple things. Um, you know, I think we evaluated things like big, like I think we talked about big Gantt. I had, or I, I'd used that at a, or big picture. I had also, I had used that at a company before I worked at App Dynamics as well. Um, so I, I knew kind of some of the ins and outs of it. Um, it wasn't as flexible as we needed for um, um, our, our, our um, reporting and, and hierarchy as, as structure is. Um, as far as reporting, we are we we've I, we've had Easy BI since I've worked at App Dynamics. So in terms of reporting, App Dyna or, I'm sorry, Easy BI is extremely powerful. It's it's you I mean it's like it's like Jira in my opinion. It's extremely flexible and powerful, but there's a huge learning curve for both um, in terms of administration and like configuring those reports. But Easy BI is super great, and it gives us exactly what we need. All right, excellent. Alex, thank you so much. Awesome job with the presentation and the Q&A. Um, as a wrap up, everyone, I'll just remind you, as I said earlier, this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, we've included a short link here on the final slide. Hopefully you jotted that down, alm.org slash YouTube. Um, and then look for the playlist called Webinar, webinar Archive. Um, if you wanna learn more about structure, um, we, um, we publish everything there is to know. Um, on the Atlassian Marketplace um, with links to other things that might also be helpful. For example, on that YouTube channel, there's a bunch of how-to videos that we keep adding more um, as we go. Um, there are feature, new feature overview videos when we release a new version of Structure uh, with some, some summary uh, demonstrations of those new features. 
So look for, you know, start, start with alm.org slash structure, which will lead you to the Atlassian marketplace. That's, a, that's the best place to start. Um, and if there's anything else at all that you'd like to ask us or our presenter today, I'll make sure I forward your questions to him if, if needed. Um, just use webinars at almworks.com. We'll be happy to take care of anything. If you think of a question tomorrow morning, like, oh crap, I didn't get to answer that, ask that question, uh, just send us an email there. So thank you very much. And with that, we'll wrap it up and um, we'll see you all next month. Um, if you're uh, interested, next month we have a, a, a Structure Cloud or Jira Cloud customer presenting their, their cloud use case for Structure. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Thank you.